Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. For 124 days, Ukraine has been resisting the Russian invasion. Over the weekend, Russia intensified its bombing of Ukraine. Missiles hit residential districts of Kiev and the vicinity of Ivizium. The main clashes are still taking place in Donbass, where Russians are trying to take Lishichansk, the last city in the Luhansk region remaining under Ukrainian control. According to the Ukrainian military command, Russian artillery fire in Donbass has been particularly intense for seven days. During yesterday's speech, President Volodymyr Zelensky emphasized that Ukraine's political partners must adopt a more decisive stance in the context of the continuing arms deliveries. Some of the missiles were shot down, but only some of them. We need a powerful air defense system, modern, fully effective, one that can provide complete protection against these missiles. We talk about this with our partners on a daily basis. The shelling of Ukrainian cities and residential districts is a deliberate sabotage activity by the Russian forces. The headquarters of the Ukrainian armed forces believe that such actions are part of a political game intended to intimidate Kiev's partners. In April, the Russians fired on residential areas of Kiev during the visit of the UN Secretary General. Today, when the G7 summit is underway, the people of Kiev are under attack again. The Russians understand that there are no weapons that can break us. They want to intimidate the whole world in this way. Be afraid or act. The choice is yours. The bombing of Donbass also led to the destruction of Kharkiv. Missiles hit residential buildings and a hospital. Before the war, Kharkiv had a population of almost 1.5 million. Currently, the city's panorama is made up of ruined buildings and rubble. We tried to get out from under the rubble, but our legs got stuck. Fortunately, the rescuers arrived quickly. They had all the equipment with them. We spent about an hour under the rubble. It was the Oregon multiple rocket launch system with a cartridge element. Fortunately, the missile did not open. It just hit the ceiling and exploded. Russian Army Command is struggling with the Army's incomplete manpower. Part-time volunteer reservists will be brought into the fight in the coming weeks. The support is to strengthen the base of the Russian forces. Since the beginning of the war in Ukraine, the Russians have suffered significant losses, including approximately 35,000 soldiers, 771 artillery systems and 217 aircraft. The G7 summit in Bavaria is currently underway. The talks focused on the strategy of military support in the face of Russian aggression in Ukraine. We are discussing all the topics that are on the agenda, especially staying united in supporting the Ukraine against the Russian aggression. And uh, we understood that the policies of all our countries are very much aligned. And this is, I think, the good message, that we are taking tough decisions, that we are also cautious, that we will help the Ukraine as much as is possible, but that we also avoid that there will be a big conflict between Ukraine at Russia and NATO. Meanwhile, black clouds hung over Russia. For the first time in over 100 years, the Kremlin has failed to pay its foreign debt obligations. The 30-day grace period for interest payments expired today. Moscow's growing foreign debt is proof of that the sanctions imposed are translating into the t deteriorating condition of the Russian economy. Poland's President Andrzej Duda held a meeting of the National Security Council. It was attended by representatives of the government and military commanders. The meeting was held in connection with the North Atlantic Treaty Organization Summit, which starts on Wednesday in Madrid. According to the head of the National Security Office, Pavel Sowoch, Poland expects that during the NATO summit in Madrid, specific decisions will be taken to increase the presence of Allied troops on the eastern flank of the alliance. We assume that the document will clearly define Russia as a threat to NATO countries and that the issues of deterrence and defense of NATO will be written in a way that formalizes a philosophy adopted after 2014. A return to the traditional role of NATO, not as an organization specializing in missions such as Afghanistan, but focusing primarily on defending the territory of the member states. The Secretary General of NATO, Jens Stoltenberg, announced an increase in NATO's rapid reaction force from 40,000 to 300,000 soldiers. In his opinion, the alliance is ready for the biggest revision of the collective defence and deterrence strategy since the Cold War. Intensive talks on the admission of Sweden and Finland to the North Atlantic Alliance have been underway for several weeks. Turkey, which has the strongest NATO army after the United States, has objections to the possible enlargement of the alliance to include those countries. A four-party presidential summit will be held in Madrid again at the request of NATO's Secretary 
Secretary General on Tuesday. The negotiations will take place in the following format, Turkey, NATO, Sweden and Finland. On the 18th of May, Finland and Sweden applied to join the world's largest defence alliance. Ankara is blocking the accession process. It demands that Stockholm extradite 33 Kurdish activists, break relations with Kurdish organisations and lift the embargo on the supply of arms and military equipment to Turkey. This is not a blockage that rules out the prospect of Swedish and Finnish membership in NATO. This is a problem of a political nature. Experts suggest that historical decisions will be made at the summit concerning, among others, the eastern flank of NATO, the membership of Sweden and Finland and the new definition of Russian's role in mutual relations. In this document, Russia is to be defined as a constant, imminent threat. A major topic of the meeting in Madrid will be the issue of military support to defend Ukraine. The topic of quick reaction and participation of NATO countries will certainly be discussed at a time when the threat is just approaching. This is a precedent, and I believe that such events have not been articulated so far. The two-day summit will be attended by 30 presidents and prime ministers. The heads of the European Union, as well as the countries not included in the organization, will be present, including Georgia, Japan and Australia. The heat wave that is sweeping through Poland is taking its toll on everyone, and not only in Poland. Temperatures are soaring across the Europe. In Rome, the temperature exceeded 39 degrees Celsius today, forcing both the Eternal City's residents and tourists to seek relief near fountains and in parks. The extremely high temperature in Italy left people queuing at the capital's many fountains and drinking fountains known as Big Noses or Nasoni that constantly gush fresh water and are a great help when wanting to cool off. With soaring temperatures, drought conditions are rapidly spreading throughout Italy, with rivers and reservoirs drying up and the forecast of higher temperatures likely to make things worse. I've been here in Rome for six years, and there have been summers as hot as this one. But other summers, like last year, weren't as hot, at least not as early as June, so I can't really say. The heat we are having in May and June isn't what we are used to. We've got 40 degrees in June. July and August will be terrifying. There's no water. There's the drought. It is a very serious problem. Italy's northern lakes were already below or close to record lows, with the level of natural reservoirs in central Italy also plunging. The Tiber River is at a multi-year low, while the flow rate of the Anien River has halved. The Lazio region, centred on Rome, declared a state of emergency last week, imposing restrictions in some communities, including bans on host pipe usage and filling swimming pools. The temperature increase and this heat wave are linked to climate change. I firmly believe it. They are deeply linked. Also, a few years ago, it wasn't that hot, so it is getting worse. That's the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us for the weather, Poland Daily Business and more programmes. But for our mates, have a good night and a better tomorrow.